Um, Tony, I want to talk to you about Jasper. I, um, I've heard through the grapevine you guys were at the Combine, and he reminded you of a, a certain Philip Lahm. <laughs> Just tell us, tell us how it all unfolded. It's a, it's a unique story. It, it is a unique story, and I think, uh, look, the credit first and foremost needs to go to Jasper. He's been absolutely fantastic and has seized the opportunity in front of him. Uh, we did you know, travel out and have a delegation at the MLS Combine, and we saw Jasper there in person, and we had been tracking him throughout the year when he was at university and, and playing college ball. But seeing him up close and seeing him both at the outside back position and in the middle of midfield, it was pretty clear to all of our staff that um, he had something. And he could, be, he could be, in the right environment, a player who could thrive. And so full credit to him to come in and approach the professional preseasons in the manner that he did. He's grabbed hold of this opportunity, and now he's consistently starting for an MLS side. It's, it's a fantastic story. Did his age scare you at all? He was one of the older players at the Combine. You, you guys, though, were a club at the time that, that had a lot of academy players kind of making their way up the ranks. Did you feel like you needed kind of a more veteran player out of the Combine? That was the idea in drafting both him and, and Pedro Fonseca as well, is we knew with the transition to MLS Next Pro, um, the Monarchs roster was going to get even younger. And that's very much apparent week to week. Our average age on the Monarchs is usually four years younger than our opponents, which is great. You know, we're a club about development, and, and part of that development is, is the pipeline coming from our academy. But in balancing out that roster, we needed some older, some established players who had gone through some challenges in the form of, of college soccer. And Jasper and Pedro were the standouts there, and we brought them both in. And again, the idea was to have Jasper play a season with the Monarchs and and have that sample size for him to develop. But again, full credit to him. He did such a fantastic job endearing himself to his teammates, to Pablo, and proving that he belongs to be part of this group right now. It's, we can't, you know, it's hard to keep him off the field. As you know, timing is, um, is an integral part of making it in, in almost any professional sporting league. The injuries at the first team at the start of the season kind of assisted him in, in making it to, uh, to debut. Sure. What do you make about the, the timing of it? Or do you think if you didn't have the injury issues you had, he may still well be at, at the Monarchs? Look, I think so much of what happens in our sport is, is serendipitous. You know, you look at the roster, and Elliot and I usually do this exercise. We look at the roster in the beginning of the year, and you kind of prioritize players of, of who you think will be most important, play the most important role in the team for the year. And there's always, come the end of the year when you review, there's always players that surprise you. And that's not to discredit them, it's just to say that so much happens throughout the course of an MLS season. There are injuries, there's other forms of adversity, there's schedule changes, that it presents opportunities for players to step in and to prove that they belong in a, a further, higher, more established role. And so, you know, seeing Jasper do that this year, you know, seeing Tate Schmidt come in at the beginning of the year and, and bang in two goals and, and prove that, you know, he belongs in that group as well. It's, look, it happens every year. This year it was Jasper. Uh, let's see, you know, in prior years it was Andrew Brody, it was Michael Chang. Um, there's one every year. Were you aware of his versatility at the Combine? I mean, he's played an, an array of positions for you, whether it be centrally or more out wide. He, he, he can play a, a handful of positions. Were you aware of that, or was that something that you, you learnt quickly upon his arrival? Look, it was something that we viewed in person at the Combine, um, you know, and it's obvious, obviously a benefit. I think the fact that he is so multidimensional is just to accredit the way Jasper approaches football. Um, you know, he, he has a very round skill set, but that's complemented by his mentality, by his willingness to move and to work. And that's very much exhibited when he plays the eight position for, for the first team. But, you know, his willingness to go in and do what's necessary for the team in a variety of roles is just another strength to his skill set. And it was, it was on display at the combine, but doing it there in that environment and doing it for the first team are, are two different Two different worlds. So again, uh, it's it's a very big compliment to Jasper that he's able to play for us in, in multiple positions. I, I've heard through the grapevine that he um, he's obviously a talented football player from a skill set perspective, but his commun his ability to communicate on the pitch is also uh, quite extraordinary. And I know late last year that was that was an issue for uh, for Pablo. We he addressed that in in one of his press conferences leading up to the playoffs. I, is he one of the best communicators on the team? Would you say? You know, I don't think it's fair for me to say since I'm not out there day in and day out and hearing him communicate. But what I can say is, you know, just from judging from 
upstairs and, and from, you know, speaking with the staff is that Jasper is a leader in his own right. And, you know, that comes in a number of forms. It certainly comes vocally as well and in, in contributing there, but just also in the way that he carries himself, the way that he approaches himself each day as a true professional. And again, in his movement as well, I think he's one of the most active players on our roster. And I think that forces players in other positions to move as well, which creates a more dynamic environment for our team, and which is you know tough to defend. Um, so, so yes, I, I believe he is vocal, but I also believe that he has leadership qualities in, in a number of areas. You're probably not going to like to answer this question, but that's okay because um, because I think you can handle it. Philip Lahm was maybe the greatest fullback to come, ever come out of Germany. What did you see that made you feel like maybe he could be, he could be a portion of what Philip Lahm was? <laughs> that's a that's a, a titan of a question. Look, I think um, I think the comparison. <laughs> it's a tricky comparison. It is a tricky comparison, uh, of course. But you know, and the obvious reason is obviously because you know he's he's German as well, and so your mind you know is quickly drawn to that comparison. Uh, he started right back and then moved into midfield, and and of course Philip Lahm was able to do that as well. But I think more than anything, it's his composure on the ball. Um, Jasper has progressed so quickly in an area that is very difficult to track and to develop, and that's his confidence on the ball. Um, very quickly over the course of you know one or two appearances for the first team, we started seeing him taking you know not the safe touch but the aggressive, correct veteran touch. And you know touches under pressure and keeping possession and moving the ball into the right areas that a seasoned veteran, a Philip Lom was able to do uh, in a multitude of positions. So I think that his ability to do that more than anything showcases that comparison. So he signed a Monarchs contract right out of the draft and then I think it was February 27th or so about a month and a half later he got his first team contract and on that same day he debuted. But it was just a one year deal. Is there plans to, to extend that? Look, I think uh, it would be very foolish of us not to want Jasper back next year. I think, you know, of course, nothing is, is given. Of course, everything is earned. But, you know, Jasper has, has certainly proved that he is a professional and can play professionally in this league. So, you know, I would expect him to continue to develop. And I would hope that he, you know, would like to be with the organization for years to come. Tony, thank you for your time. Of course, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Cover, man. Perfect. Pablo, I'm uh, I'm doing a well. No, actually, let's start with Aaron Herrera. The news broke last night. Um, you, are you excited? I assume you're pretty wrapped. Yeah, no, I think it's exciting. I think Aaron has been a uh, a big player for the, for the club for many years, and has you know worked his way up through the ranks. And uh, it's just great to see uh, homegrown talent come through, and 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 you know get a new contract for 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 the long term. He's, uh, in my opinion, anyway, one of the better fullbacks in the league. How much better can he get, in your opinion? Well, I think there's always room for growth, right? I, I think um, you know, I think when you're consistently playing for the national team, it's really a benchmark for you know for getting to a really, really high level. And I think that's what uh, his aim is, and that's what our hopes are for him as well. And so I think some of that uh, has to come from uh, you know his his positioning, um, but as far as his technical ability, his athletic prowess, uh, definitely tops in the league. It's just little micro adjustments that I think we continue to work on to hopefully get him to where he wants to be. What a story Jasper's been for you guys, kind of an older kid at the Combine. Uh, we just spoke to Tony. He reminded him of, 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 of uh, Philip Lahm a little bit, which is, which is quite, quite, quite a comparison. Um, and then German. And then he is German, I guess. The, the injuries at the start of the year obviously aided him to get minutes at the first team level. How, how much of what you've seen from Jasper is, is, is timing? Um, I think a, a lot of life is timing and opportunity. I, I think he put himself in a really good way in preseason. You know, I think uh, consistently over the course of the last six months has been has achieved some of the highest uh, running metrics on the team. Um, his effort and his commitment to the group is uh, top level. And, and I think when you have a guy that's willing to commit and brings that energy every day, um, he'll find himself in favorable situations. And now he's earned the right, you know, to be starting for this team. Uh, he's very versatile. Is that is that something you, as a manager, must must really enjoy? You can play him centrally, out wide. He's a good communicator from all reports, which I know the club had a few issues with towards the end of last season. Yeah. He's he's an important player now. Yeah, you know, I think all that. I think all that uh, lends itself to uh, you know 
um, finding yourself on the starting lineup. He communicates well, he's flexible, um, and he's really intelligent as to what's being asked and how he executes that on the field. Uh, midweek, you, you admitted you really didn't know what to expect from Columbus given they had so many first-team players out, their previous fixture. Do you think you have a better idea or is it still? Nope. We prepared for a three, we prepared for a four, uh, we prepared for um, you know, Santos being in, Santos being out, Mensa the same thing. Um, so we're, uh, again, I think when, you're in, when you have that type of, um, un, the, 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 that many unknowns, you really fall back on what you want to do. And, and we've played against three, played against four, uh, so we have a pretty good idea as to what that'll look like, get, uh, you know, minus the, uh, the players that will be playing. You obviously want to study the opposition, but when you're in, in the sort of form you're in and you're playing with the sort of confidence, do you focus more on the group? as opposed to the opposition? Does it change at all, or do you just keep things as they have been the whole time? No, I think, um, you know, I think from the beginning we've really focused on ourselves and talked about areas where we want to continue to get better. Um, that's always first and foremost. I, I believe if you don't know who you are, it doesn't matter what anyone else, when, what anyone else is trying to achieve. You know, and I think so every, every time we do scouts on our opponents, we're always throwing in uh, recaps of our last game in those certain situations that can help bring some context to it. So we're always uh, layering our stuff on top of our opponents. Um, and then when you're dealing with the Eastern Conference, you really don't have a, a really good idea as to how they're going to do things other than looking at film. Um, but again, I think in these moments, we're really falling back on ourselves. The club announced uh, Bobby Wood underwent successful abductor surgery this morning. He's obviously going to be sidelined for quite some time, which is what you kind of anticipated midweek. Rubio Rubin, though, a guy that played pretty well last year under your guidance, now gets his re first real opportunity, I would say, in 2022. But what do you expect um, from him? Do, do you think it'll take him maybe a few few games to kind of get into the rhythm of it? Or is his job to get out there and go? Yeah, I think so. I think Rubio knows what we're trying to achieve. Uh, I think it's been a, really about sharpness for him, not having a preseason with the group. I think going away with the Guatemalan national team really brought a lot of confidence to his game. He's been scoring goals in training, and now it's about going out and expressing yourself in the way that we know that he can uh, tomorrow, for, you know, starting the game and, and, and putting forth a great performance. Lastly, Diego Luna is playing pretty well at the under-20 level. Have you been keeping track of him? I have been watching the games. He's been doing extremely well. Um, you know, I thought, uh, you know, against Canada, he was uh, probably one of the brightest spots on the team, finding ways to create it from tight spaces, big spaces, but most importantly for me, a young player that makes really, really good decisions with the ball in that final third. Um, really rare players, and I think he's done extremely well. Um, and uh, look forward to continue watching him play. Pablo, best of luck tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate Thanks. it. Aaron, um, congratulations on the extension. I'm sure you're probably pretty sick of talking about it at this point, but what, was it an easy decision in the end for you? Um, yeah, definitely wasn't wasn't a difficult one. Um, I'm happy here. I think we're building something great right now, and obviously it puts me in a good situation. And yeah, I just think. Moving forward right now, I think the team's looking awesome. We've we've added a couple great pieces who have really been performing this year, and we're right there at the top of the league. So we're trying to keep it going. It wasn't a, it wasn't that long ago that there were rumors circulating that maybe you could you could venture off to Spain or, or somewhere in Europe. You've got now until at least 2024 with two club options. Do do you still aspire to to one day play in Europe? You are still quite young, so this certainly is time. Yeah, I think I'm entering my prime probably right now. So, um, I mean, obviously at the end of my career, it'd be awesome to say that I played over there and was able to sort of test those waters. And I mean, everyone here at the front office, Elliot, Tony, all of them have always been super supportive and said that they'd be willing to help if the opportunity did arise. And so um, just because I signed here doesn't mean I'm locked in forever. Um, but right now I'm happy here. And I mean, the goal is to win some trophies here. What, what are some of the highlights of your career so far? Um, I don't know if I could pick out any specific highlights, but I mean, making the playoffs every year, obviously, except 2020, which was sort of a weird year, I think. Um, I mean, all the playoff wins, that, every year we've made the playoffs, we've, we've been able to make some sort of run. So, um, the goal but against LAFC last year doesn't come obviously out. first goal, there's a lot of things like that. First assist, debut, there's, there's so many little things like that. Um, but I think we're just we're more, more focused on the team goals. We want to win trophies. You see all these, watch these all these NBA championships all the time, and you see the celebrations after. And I think here's a team we want that so bad. So I think the the main goal is just to win some trophies, man. That's what we want. I think I think Salt Lake is is deserving of a parade. It's been uh, it's been far too long. Um, how does your body feel? You played eight of the sixteen games this year. 
mainly due to injury. You had that one red card suspension. Is your body feeling pretty good? Yeah, body feels great. Um, obviously, I haven't been able to avoid the injuries. The season has been super frustrating, and so um, trying to figure it out. It's always injuries always sort of seem to compound because you overcompensate when say it's your right quad, then you're overcompensating, and then your left leg starts to pick up stuff. So, yeah, doing doing everything I can to, to stay healthy. But right now, I feel great. Okay, perfect. Best of luck yeah, tomorrow. Congrats sir. again, man. Thank you. Uh, let's, like, go way back, if we can. You grew up in Germany. Um, what was that like? Where were you? And and, and where were you playing? Uh, so I grew up close to Cologne. Uh, it's, like, probably the biggest city around us. Uh, yeah, just doing my doing my normal stuff, going to high school, going to college, uh, trying to get my bachelor's degree, and play for like play club soccer there, semi professionally, in fifth and fourth division over the last couple five four years. So uh, yeah, from there on, just came over here. And then, so you were in college in Germany, and then you transferred to Pittsburgh. Exactly. What, yeah. how, how did that happen? Did did coaches come find you, or did you go find them? Uh, I had a teammate in one of my teams. Uh, and, and he was talking about his experience going to the college in America, doing his master's program and like being in a good soccer program to like uh, make a big step and like his, his abilities on how to play. And for me it was like because I finished my bachelor's degree, it was like kind of a split decision to like quit soccer and work a full-time job. Uh, I, was, I was going to auditing at KPMG, they offered me a job, so I was like if I go there I can't, I can't play anymore. So uh, it was like my last my last chance, my last outlet to say, okay, I, I can actually like do something. I, I'm gonna do my master's degree, so it's like it's a purpose behind it, and I also can like continue playing soccer at like a high level. I had a good facility with like good people around you to like bring you to the next level. Um, so I made that decision. Uh, talked to the agency, and they were all down for it, helped me, and uh, from there on it went really fast. It was COVID. We, like just had a highlight video, and like it all went super fast. Like in a month, I was like. Yeah, committed to pit and try to try to go so over. You got offered KPMG in Germany. In Germany, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I did. I did my. I did like an internship for like uh, five months at KPMG, like next to my next to my bachelor's degree. And whenever I was done, they offered me like a job and even like doing a dual master, like in in combination with working and going to college. Um, so I was like nearly committed to quitting soccer and like uh, yeah. That's working full time and yeah now my life's completely changed now I love I love playing playing soccer I love my job now uh, it's obviously like two different worlds like <laughs> could have easily been a 9 to 5 or maybe a 9 to 9 job sitting in the office and, and crunching numbers the whole day uh, which is also fun for me I do enjoy that as well but uh, yeah as long as I can play uh, I want to do that it's like it's, it's the biggest part of my life uh, soccer has always been in it and I do love it and I uh, fully appreciate the experience I have so far so when you were at the uh, MLS combine Tony Beltran was speaking to Elliot Fall and he said I reckon that kid over there Jasper reminds him of a, a of a young Philip Lahm <laughs> one of the greatest German players to ever play the game what what is it in your opinion how have you become such a versatile player you can play centrally you can also play out on the wing did you grow up playing in a number of different positions and what what do you think your best position is do you do you know um so obviously growing up it was like you you got to figure a way like what's your best position um i played in like till i was 15 i played in like a a bigger club uh, in my hometown uh, I was more like a sub, so like uh, I got subbed in on different positions, uh, like even forward, uh, wingers, six, nine, whatever. Um, but then like when I switched clubs and I was like one of the best players, I probably could choose like what I want to play, and it was more like a six, eight, or ten. So like central midfield, because it was like I just love to be involved in the game. I, I run forever. I just want to be involved in either side of the game, like defense and attack. So uh, yeah, that's like how I started basically. And once once I got the senior football and the level got a little bit faster and rougher and everything, uh, one of my coaches said we want to transfer like transform you to like a right back. We want to have you like behind the game, like you have a good end speed to like make runs in behind, but also like cover enough ground to like so you can go forward and like cover ground in the back. So uh, yeah, for my last seven years I think like when I from when I was like 18 to like 24 right now before I came here I always played right back uh, did good on that uh, obviously like I would whenever people throw me in out any position I just like try to give it my best I'm not I'm not like afraid to step up at any spot because I think 
the knowledge you got about soccer is so wide that you can basically like step into every position knowing what your job is and then really focusing on like really doing the basics which is like just don't rush things don't turn the ball over and stupid like just make good decisions and try to help the team out and I think for me like my biggest key to the game is just like my mental piece to it you know it's like giving 110% every game every day I practice doesn't matter and therefore like really if I have to press up front I don't care if I have to like track people back from, from center mid I, I really don't care either so it's just like up for the challenge any time and I think it worked out really well right now uh, obviously the, the coach gave me a big trust at the beginning of the season to like put me in different spots and see if I can I can work it out and from there on it went quite well yeah how big is your engine? Like how far, how, how how far do you run? Do you go kilometers or miles? Uh, we go kilometers, yeah. Okay. So how like my 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 highest game here was I think like twelve and a half at Montreal or twelve point eight. Well, uh, Montreal's an interesting game. Yeah, it was. You collapsed to the ground at the end of that. You missed your your sister's wedding yeah. in Germany. How yeah. hard was that? It was uh, yeah heartbreaking to be honest. Um, we try to figure it out. And just the day before, they told me like we we can't make it happen. Like it was like visa issues. I would have missed probably a month where I have to stay in Germany waiting for an appointment at the embassy. So um, yeah, it was just the decision I had to make. Like I don't want to let down the team. I I like I felt bad to just like let them down for one game because obviously like I was playing. Um, so that would be like heartbreaking for me too, but not to go and like it coming closer and then have like the final word of, of our admins and be like, we can't make it happen, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, just gave me the rest and like I talked to coaches the day prior to prior to the game. They were like, are you are you willing to play? Do you want to like, we want you to start, but you feel okay to start. And I was like, you know what, I think maybe that's like another boost for me to like give it even more percentage of what I got and I feel like that's what exactly happened and that's why it came off like broke down at the end I was just like so happy we we, we like came back from a 1-0 <laughs> uh, yeah 1-0 in the first minute and uh, just turning it around being able to to do my thing was just like so overwhelming for me in that moment and then emotions just take over and it was a little bit too much for me you know <laughs> okay we can move on um, at the start of the season, the club was dealing with a lot of injuries, which is part of the reason you were able to get your opportunity yeah. because out of the combine, you just signed with the Monarchs, yeah. but they needed you with the injuries. You signed a contract on the day that you signed that contract, you played, you debuted. Yeah. Is that crazy to you? Is, is, is a lot of professional sport about timing? Uh, 100% timing and like just a little bit of luck obviously like in, in Germany we have like a saying like you're the master of your own luck basically like if I would have played bad the whole preseason there's like even with that luck I would call it like obviously you feel bad if like teammates get injured but like you wouldn't have had the opportunity to like step up um, so I think it's just like it's just like a big complex thing where like loads of variants come together and at one day I was like you gotta make everything that you can control, like make the best out of it, you know. And that's that's what I try every day. Uh, like, don't really worry about the uncontrollables there are in your life. Uh, sometimes it, it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, and that case, uh, yeah, it it worked out pretty well for me. Um, I got to sign, got to sign my first team contract. Uh, I was super hyped, super stoked. Uh, coaches gave me the trust and just like put me out there to get a stat in. I was like even more happy, even though uh, I didn't even touch the ball. I ran probably like 100 meters or whatever, and then uh, yeah, flew back. Well, it was the best feeling ever. Um, and from there on, it was just like incredible. Like just the journey we've had so far, and uh, the trust I've become from the coaches. Um, also, like with their support, like on my personal behalf, like with everything that was going on. Uh, I'm just so thankful for the chance they've given me so far and hopefully I can I can prove everybody everybody wrong and, and show them like what I'm made of and show them that I that can work even harder and I make things happen for the club. Yeah. When you're on the football you're very calm, which I think is part of the reason why Tony Beltran was probably like maybe there's a young Philip Lam in him, but you're also versatile, which Philip was too. Do you do you get nervous? Uh, it's funny because um not at all. Really? In college, I was very nervous because in college I played right back and it was always like up and down the, the line, like just going back and forth the whole time. And like I was nervous before big games, which is kind of weird. Like the the 
the max crowd we had was probably like 4,000 people or something. And then you come here, you play in front of a full house of like 25,000 and it's just like super calm. Like I don't really care. Kansas City was the same. Like I got, I got, that was my first start ever. And like sold out house there and probably like 20, 22,000 people as well. Just like <laughs> cursing at you the whole time and calling you bad words. I don't want to say on here. Uh, <laughs> but even it's like mellow. Yeah. Even then it's just like, you just like. They, those people don't know me, you know, like they can say all they want. But if I sit down with them after a game, they probably wouldn't say anything in my face, you know, because like I'm a, I'm a genuine guy. I was just like trying to do my best on the pitch. Everybody makes mistakes. I know that. And for me, I don't really care about like what anybody, what anybody else says. I try to make the best out of, of myself. I try to make the best for the team, for the coaches that they like give me the trust. I can prove them that's, that I'm trustworthy and, and can pull off like a good performance every time they, they put me on the pitch. So uh, yeah, I'm really just focusing on on what those people say. If 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 I go out here and and have uh, a bad game and Cello would scream for me for like ten minutes in the game, then I'll probably be nervous because I'm gonna be like, damn, I gotta prove those guys that I that I'm trustworthy. They can like get my shit, sorry, get my stuff together and uh, yeah, and and have a good game. Yeah. yeah. Is your whole family in Germany? Whole family's in Germany. Yeah, grandma, grandpa, sister, and her her husband right now. Uh, brother and my my parents for sure. They came out like two months ago for they for did. a week. Yeah, they it was like lovely. It. They love it here. Yeah, they're big fans of like the outdoors as well. So like they love hiking and and we go like on winter vacation, snowboarding, everything. So I told them like, whenever you guys are free, you can always like come out here. Obviously, uh, it's a little bit difficult with like it's a 15 hour flight I reckon and like nine hour time difference. So. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not the easiest, but they support me like 100% on my way, and I do really appreciate that. Um, and yeah, I'm buzzing if, if I can, can make it happen a little bit more that they come over here and we just have a good time here. Uh, lastly, have you found any good German food spots around here? I think there might be one downtown Salt Lake City. I can't remember the name of it. To be honest, I'm not a big fan of the German kitchen. Like oh, my, really? my, my grandma cooks a lot of like German kitchen food, uh, which is delicious i like it but my dad who's like a very good cook by the way uh he's more on like mediterranean stuff like from from spain israel portugal all that stuff uh turkey so we never like had the fully german kitchen back at home it was always like a good mix of everything um so i have to say i don't miss the german kitchen but i do miss the german beer at some point so that's <laughs> that's that's what i'm all missing yeah. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate Have you. Have a good day. You too. I'll see you soon. Thanks. Best of luck Thanks. tomorrow. You too.